This is my Revision 1 Pro S2 board, which I've already built. It's got beta silicon on it. It works great, except I need to attach an external programmer to it because the beta silicon of the S2 did not have USB support. This is the PCB for my Revision 2 Pro S2 board. And this is the PCB for my Revision 3 Pro S2 board. As you can see, this is quite a bit longer. It's got stacks more stuff on it. But we won't be building this today because I'm still waiting on parts for this. So I can't make a complete board, which is frustrating. But I'm super keen to see how well the USB works on the final silicon that I have. So I'm going to build a revision 2 of my Pro S2 and check it out, see how it works. Let's get started. is. It's a bit warm, just let it cool down before I handle it. Everything looks to have reflowed correctly, but I need to give it a bit of a peek under the microscope just to confirm that there are no shorts and everything is on their pads. Okay, there's just one small bridge just over here. And that cap's a little wonky, but it looks like it's connected properly. So let's just hot air and fix this. So if the video gets a little bit wobbly, it's the camera through my microscope is floating on an arm so it wobbles around a little bit sometimes all you need to do is pick it up and put it back down again okay excellent let this cool down and then we'll beep it out and make sure there are no shorts and then we can plug it in okay we're now going to beep it out okay cool so let's check out battery to ground nope ground to 5 volts good Ground to 3.3 volts, 5 volts to 3 volts, 5 volts to battery, so that was 3.3 volts to battery, 5 volts to battery, good. Ground to ground, ground to reset, good. Ground to the second LDO, excellent. First to the second LDO. Okay, there are no shorts, that is awesome. So. I need to power this up and see if it can be recognized on my computer or not. Let's start by just plugging it in and see if we get power. It's USB-C. Okay, dun dun dun, bit nervous. 
Okay, we've got a power light, which is correct. We have our little charge flashing light, which is correct. I need to now see if I can see it on my computer. Let's take a look. Hi. That was frustrating. So remember when I told you that the ESP32 S2 support in the IDF was pre-beta? Yes, it's uh, very pre-beta. There is lots missing and I went around in a bit of a circle for a few days trying to work out how to actually use my Pro S2 with the IDF. But spoiler alert for those that don't want to wait till the end, does my board work? Well, yes it does. Look at that. Nice cycling APA. So, I flashed this board using the built-in USB. Took me a while to work out how to do it because something that it takes, which has really tripped me up for my next revision board, this one here, is it requires you to put the board into download mode. Now, some of you might recall the process. You hold down the boot button and you press the reset button. So when the board boots up, it's in download mode. That way it activates the internal CDC USB stack that's inside the ROM. And you can then see the device as a USB modem 01 on the Mac anyway. I'm not sure what it appears as on other platforms. Without doing that, the board doesn't appear. And if it doesn't appear, you can't flash it. So it took me a while to work that out. Thank you very much, Angus Retton, for pointing me in the right direction. The problem is, on this board, I took the boot button off because I didn't realize it was needed. Anyway, problem number two is that though I can flash this using the built-in USB, I can't get any serial output from the built-in USB. So I went through builds and builds and builds and flashing and flashing of not knowing if my code was working or not because I couldn't get any serial output. So in the end, I wrote a APA little driver so I can cycle the APA. So I knew that my board was working because there's no other onboard LEDs on the board. So obviously it is working and it's flashable. It's a bit of a pain. It's got a long way to go, but it'll get there. Now Tiny USB is being worked on at the moment. I've been having a chat with the Tiny USB folks and also Espressive. There's some bugs in the current version of Tiny USB that is in the IDF. It appears in the menu config list, but it's not actually doing anything right now. There is a newer version of it that's coming. I think there's just a couple of outstanding bugs. And when that gets merged into the IDF in a future release, I'll be able to then see the board while it's running without putting it back into boot mode. Because if I don't put it in download mode, then I can't see the device. So right now this is not in download mode, so this doesn't appear anywhere. But with tiny USB stack in there, I'll be able to see it when it's running. Now one of the things that Espressive are looking at doing with the USB stack, the internal stack, is that once the board's been flashed for the very first time, so there is some firmware on there, it should be able to then detect when the USB is plugged in. They'll have a fiddle with the RTS and DTR signals that are coming out, because they're not exposed at all for the internal USB. They'll do a, a bit of a twiddle on that, and then it should automatically recognize the USB is being plugged in, depending on which mode you've got the board in. But until it's got the first flash on there, so on a completely empty erased chip, that won't work and you'll have to hold down the download button. Now the good thing is, when these go into production and I ship these, they'll come with firmware already on them, which means that will already be there for people. I'm responsible for flashing it for the first time while I test it. So, it was an exciting adventure. I'm very proud of the fact that I got it working and I persevered and yeah, everything about the board works great. The onboard second LDO is working perfectly. All the IO is working. The APA is working. I haven't really played around with Wi-Fi on it. Um, not really sure there's any point at this stage. I need to move on to my next revision. But my next revision, that's this board, there's no point building right now because, well, I, I mean, I can flash it. I've got IO zero exposed, so I could just stick some wires on there and short it to be able to flash it. I may do that, and I might just do another board spin. We'll see how we go. But the good news is, my Pro S2 is working, it's working great. The onboard USB, although problematic and missing features right now, is working, as you can see. So, exciting. What's next? Well, I might have myself a whole pile of ESP32 S2s. 300 of them. 
so I can start making more prototypes and maybe make some early versions of the boards for people that might be interested. How cool is that? If you'd like to see more about my ProS2 or my other ESP32 boards, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the alarm bell, and make sure you've got all notifications turned on to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To my patrons, love you, you're great. I really appreciate all your generosity. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.